Hello, my name is Gabe Myrandress, and I'm the head of the wig and make department here at San Francisco Opera. And I'd like to take you behind the scenes and meet some of the talented people who work in our department and to see what their jobs entail. My name is Susan Stone, and I'm the senior hairdresser for San Francisco Opera. We have a total of five people working here full time. Making wigs, um, styling the wigs appropriately, uh, putting the wigs on people's heads in the evening um, for all the dress rehearsals and performances, and giving them an appropriate makeup, which may not be pretty. <laughs> Opera is not very pretty sometimes, so that's why we like to say the word appropriate, because sometimes we make them look really bad. This is a really fun makeup that Toby Mayer, one of our principal makeup artists, is doing. And uh, this is the commendatory in our production of Don Giovanni, where rather than coming back as a statue, he comes back as a decomposing corpse. Pretty grisly. There's actually a wonderful um, disintegrating wig that was all made on lace that fits over this entire um, bald pate cap. And it's quite, quite a look. The wig that I have here in my lap, this is just a basic cap. And what you do first is you make a little hat out of this netting or you make a little hat out of lace. And you can customize, you can customize the, um, what you're doing, your piece of fabric. It's like making a dress. And you can customize it to fit that person's head. Because everybody's ears are in a different place on their head and their nape measurement is different. And you know, it's different. Right. It's like basically making a dress. And we're, then we're knotting the hair into it. It takes 40 to 60 hours, so it's an entire work week at least to make one hand-tied wig on a basic cap like this. And that's the loop that we pull the hair from to make a kind of like a very tight slip knot. And as I'm starting out here at the very bottom of this, I just started this wig yesterday afternoon, you can see the knots there, that's three to four hairs per knot. And as I work my way up towards the front, I will go to two hairs here, and then for the lace front, I will go to one hair at a time. This is uh, the knotting of a wig, and actually on this part of the foundation we do what's called a double knot, which means that the hair has much less chance of pulling out. If you're familiar with hooking a rug, it's the same movement, and I have a funny feeling that the slang term for a toupee rug may have uh, some origin in this um, particular style of knotting or wig making. It's much like making a rug. Ah, here we see Marcello, and he's starting to tie highlights and lowlights into the wig, and what this does is it gives the wig um, more depth, particularly on stage. We tend to tie the colors in rather than try and use product because we're not certain always what the chemical process on the hair may have been before we receive the hair. And so this way there's less chance of damaging the hair. Uh, here you see some wooden head forms, and these are what's used to build the foundation. Uh, the numbers on the front indicate the size of the wig that we'd be building. And Robert is also hand tying a wig. Uh, in addition to fully hand tied wigs, we sometimes use a commercial wig, uh, which may be what's called wefted, which is uh, knotted hair on strings. And uh, we will take and disassemble the front part of that wig and add a new crown and a new lace front. And this really is a much less expensive process in that the labor process is sometimes three days versus six to nine days to 10 days. And that makes a big difference. This foundation is all on lace and usually reserved for principal artists because they're very delicate. Uh, you'll also notice that there's an inventory tag on the inside, and that's how we actually trace um, our inventory to see how many wigs we own, and also to keep track of which particular artist may have worn a wig. Uh, and Susan's holding the lace front against her hand, and you see that when this is glued down to the performer's face, the lace virtually disappears, and it looks as if the hair is growing from their scalp. Here's an example of a beard being made, probably for Boris Gudinov. And the work on a beard is much like making the front of a wig or the hairline of a wig in that it's all lace. Uh, we generally use a little bit coarser hair for beards. Texturally, men's beards are, are rougher hair 
than uh, the soft, silky hair you'd find in the front of a wig. Uh, here is one of the characters being readied for the production of the magic flute. The wig is made out of yak hair, uh, and uh, it's lacquered to a fairly well to keep its shape. Uh, here Susan is playing with some of our display wigs, which we sometimes keep for show and tell from past productions. Uh, that particular giant head was from Rheingold and was actually cast at ILM at Lucas. Uh, we didn't have the facilities to do foam latex at that point. Um, so you see we do everything from fantasy to very natural to mustaches, beards, uh, you name it. It's, it's always an adventure. Each, each new season is an adventure. We never know what's going to be happening. So there you have a brief glimpse of what goes on behind the scenes of the San Francisco Opera Wig and Makeup Department. Thanks for stopping by.